An electrical issue led to a fire in Garen Tuesday morning that caused tens of thousands of dollars worth of damage. KDB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, the cause of yesterday morning's porch fire on Bluffview Drive in Gearing has been determined. Gearing Fire Chief Nathan Flowers says firefighters responded with a full staff engine and by accessing the backyard off of U Street, found fire leaving an enclosed patio that was connected to the residence. The owner of the residence was awoken by smoke and called 911, and firefighters were able to get a quick knockdown and stop forward progress, keeping the fire from entering the main residence. Flower says the cause of the fire was determined an electrical wire arcing, and estimated damage was approximately $25,000. Scottsville provided mutual aid with Garing Police and Valley Ambulance also responding. Well, a memorial service for the two Western Nebraska Community College students who died in a tragic accident at the WNCC Aviation Maintenance Facility in Sydney has been set for this Saturday. Yemen Ann and Zhao Shin Chen died on April 1st during a hands-on instruction accident and both students began their WNCC careers in 2019. WNCC President Dr. Carmen Simone says the memorial service will be at 3 p.m. at the Elks Lodge in Sydney, and a memorial fund has been established to help support aviation students during this difficult time. That fund will help current students cover expenses such as travel, counseling services, living expenses, and other additional needs as instruction was paused following the tragedy that occurred. Well, coming up after the break, Steve shows in with your midweek forecast. I love that right after this on KNEB.TV News. At Platte Valley Bank, we realize the way people want to bank in the future may be different than it has been. As comfort levels and desires vary by person, banking may be different for some, yet not for others. We offer the best of both worlds, a traditional banking experience with our friendly tellers and an online or mobile banking option with features that you can personalize and utilize anytime, anywhere you go. So you can bank how you want, when you want, and from where you want to. Platte Valley Bank. At Elite Physical Therapy, we provide preventative and rehabilitative treatments that maximize function and promote well-being for patients of all ages. With two locations in Scotts Bluff and Gearing, we offer the convenience of you choosing your location with the same great services no matter where you go. Stop into one of our locations today in Scotts Bluff at 214 West 27th Street or in Gearing at 10th and M Street and see what Elite Physical Therapy can do for you. Treatment you need and care you deserve. This is KNEB.TV Weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. And good evening with KNEB.TV Weather. I'm Steve Chose. Well, a complicated forecast scenario across southeast Wyoming and the western Nebraska panhandle. Certainly an unsettled weather pattern over the next 48 hours as snow is dominating the headlines in the period as an expansive upper level low tracks slowly eastward across the Great Basin toward the central Rockies large part of eastern Wyoming uh, already in winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings uh, through Friday morning snow will continue to impact the region in multiple waves during the period with the worst conditions generally occurring during the night and early morning hours with less opportunity for melting of snow on roadways most of the snow that's occurred has stayed in grassy areas. Widespread 48-hour snowfall amounts from 3 to 6, maybe as much as 4 to 8 inches in some areas. Locally, 5 to 10-inch snowfall amounts are expected across the lower elevations with 1 to 2 feet possibly in the snowy range area of 
southern Wyoming. Near blizzard conditions could be possible near Arlington and Elk Mountain tonight uh, through early tomorrow's locally heavy snow expected to spread across the remainder of the Panhandle by Thursday and Thursday night into Friday's forecast. The snow in areas of Wyoming today forced the closure of some roads uh, across that area, including portions of Interstate 80 that were closed uh, in southeast Wyoming due to winter weather conditions. Snowfall amount here at Scouts Bluff over the last 24 hours. We did receive, we'll say, between two and a half to three inches of snow right here at our K&EB studio at Scotts Bluff. Other areas received less, and again, it was a wet snow that stuck mainly to grassy areas and not on pavement and road surfaces, but uh, the amount here at K&EB, the snowfall amount, was about two and a half to three inches, the possibility for more snow coming our way soon. Overnight lows tonight will drop to the low 30s. Then uh, by uh, tomorrow we'll have highs that uh, may not even get out of the 30s. Forecast highs on Thursday and Friday mainly in the 30s. Chilly weather, the possibility for snow. Record high temp for today's date, 91 once again in 1898. The record low just set last year for this date in Scotts Bluff in 2020. It was 9 degrees. There's the uh, outlay of winter weather advisories and uh, winter storm warnings in effect. The storm warnings are in effect for those higher elevations in southern Wyoming, far western Laramie and Albany County into Carbon County, a little further north and west in areas of Natrona County and areas west of there. But the remainder of uh, eastern Wyoming, including all of Platte and Goshen and Laramie County, are in a winter weather advisory that also touches a part of southwest South Dakota, including the Black Hills region. And the northern half of Sioux County listed in the winter weather advisory area. These are in effect for most of those areas until 6 a.m. on Friday morning. Other areas of the Panhandle that aren't reflected in advisories now could be added to winter weather advisories uh, as we progress into this system by tomorrow and into Friday, so other areas of the Panhandle could be uh, included in these winter weather advisories. Keep up to date on the forecast and follow that as we move along. Well, uh, the forecast uh, lows we'll check on here uh, soon. The current temperatures are 30s and 40s, kind of a mix of uh, these uh, temperatures around the region right now. And as we've mentioned, it is going to be chillier tomorrow with highs that may not get out of the 30s tomorrow and on Friday as well. When we look at forecast uh, low temperatures, let's check on winds here first of all. Today uh, the wind was quite a bit less, just a little bit of breeze, not really very much today in the wind factor. We had a peak wind gust of 33 miles per hour out in the northwest yesterday and winds were a lot less than that here today. There's the forecast low picture. It'll be upper 20s and low 30s across the region. With forecast highs, as we've told you, we may not see 40 degrees tomorrow. Some of these temps may stay in the low 30s across the area. Uh, but a uh, chilly day tomorrow, and the same goes for Friday's highs too, staying mainly in the 30s. These temps will moderate somewhat by the weekend, especially on Sunday. But quite chilly in the forecast highs uh, for tomorrow and on Friday. Precipitation forecast uh, over the next 36 hours. You can see the liquid amounts of precip uh, that could be as much as a half an inch or more in areas of the Nebraska Panhandle. The possibility for this coming in snow will progress uh, a little bit more for areas of the Panhandle as we move into Thursday and Friday's forecast. There may be some showers, but uh, a good share of that precip could fall in uh, the form of snow in those winter weather advisories and some winter storm warnings already in effect for east and southeast Wyoming and other areas of the Panhandle could be included in some of these advisories by Thursday and by Friday. 
Snowfall amounts reflected there over the next 36 hours. It may increase and be a little bit more as we get into uh, Friday's forecast with 3 to 6 inch snowfall amounts in some of those areas and maybe uh, amounts ranging from 4 to 8 with locally higher amounts and 1 to 2 feet possible in the snowy range areas of southeast Wyoming. There's the forecast low right around 30 with a possibility for some redeveloping snow showers late. Winds will stay light overnight. Forecast highs tomorrow not very high here in uh, mid-April. We'll have highs only in the upper 30s, mid to upper 30s. Forecast high, the target high for Scotts Bluff tomorrow looks like 37. A very good chance for snow showers throughout the day. About the same forecast for Friday. Good chance for uh, maybe some measurable snow throughout the period on Friday. And highs on Friday, too, will stay generally in the 30s. There it is, the seven-day forecast reflecting that uh, very good chance of precipitation, snow showers on Thursday, rain and snow showers on Friday. Pretty good chance of that with those chillier temperatures. Might see some sun on Saturday, still a 20% chance for precip as highs rebound a little bit to the mid-40s. And then by sunny, or by Sunday, it will be sunny with highs that could get close to 60 degrees. It's kind of a short-lived warm-up on Sundays. We turn chillier again by Monday and Tuesday. Another chance for precipitation uh, early into next week. That is an update on our forecast uh, for now. For KNEB.TV meteorologist Bill Boyer, I'm Steve Chose reporting. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full-service gas leader. The Verizon family is full of frowns because they're spending too much for their unlimited data and phones, while the Viero family is all smiles because they're getting four lines of unlimited data with two free Apple iPhone SE for mom and dad and two free LG K31 smartphones for the kids, all for just $100 a month. They're saving so much, they're able to get Fido. Find out how you can too at Viero.com or your nearest Viero store. Viero Wireless, keeping you connected. Welcome to the snow show, boys and girls. Today we'll be learning about safe snow tips. Yay! Tip number one. When scooping the sidewalk, always deposit the snow on your lawn and gardens. Not only is it environmentally safe, it keeps our streets and gutters clear. Tip number two, where there's ice on the ground, use salt only as a last resort. Use no salt de-icers, which are less harmful to plants, animals, and your concrete. Be safe around snow and ice. The show is brought to you today by Tri-State Farm. Welcome back. Nebraska's governor is taking issue with the Biden American Infrastructure Plan, saying it's not really a true infrastructure program. In the document from Biden officials, Nebraska received a C- for an infrastructure rating, something Pete Ricketts took issue with during a news conference with reporters this week. We have historically scored very high when it comes to infrastructure, and in, I think, uh, Taylor, you're going to have to help remind me, we were number 12 this year from the Reason Foundation, so still in the top quartile of states with regard to how we're doing with regard to our infrastructure. Ricketts says... Only about 5% of the Biden plan goes to roads and bridges, and even if things such as mass transit and a bailout of Amtrak are included, that figure rises to about 16%. He said the rest of the measure is a way for Democrats to fund other items that truly don't qualify as infrastructure. And Nebraska U.S. Senator Deb Fischer joined a bicameral group of lawmakers this week in meeting with President Biden to discuss the spending package proposed by the White House. Fisher joined Dana Perino on Fox News, saying she supports spending on true infrastructure, 
but said this bill was not a true infrastructure package. We need roads, bridges, we need, we need uh, airports, ports, waterways. All of that needs to be taken care of. That's what you invest in in a country. I also support broadband as part of that. But when you look at those first four things that I mentioned, they make up a very, very small percentage of this bill. In fact, electric vehicles is getting more money out of this bill than traditional infrastructure. So I wouldn't call it an infrastructure bill. Senator Fisher is a leading legislator on infrastructure, chairing the Senate Commerce Subcommittee on Surface Transportation from 2015 to 2021, and now serves as the subcommittee's top Republican. And Nebraska officials said they will stop distributing Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccine while federal officials investigate six reports of people developing blood clots after receiving that shot, including one here in the Cornhusker State. The Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services said last week that one individual in Douglas County in their late 40s had developed blood clots two weeks after receiving the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That vaccine was a relatively small part of the state's plans this week because officials expected to only receive 3,300 doses of it after getting 27,000 and change last week. Nebraska is still expected to receive 90,000 doses of the other two coronavirus vaccines this week. Why settle for Wi-Fi that just usually works? Why settle for customer service that's subpar? Why settle for service that's outdated? You don't have to. Settle for more with Allo, the faster, more reliable internet experience that's built for the way you use all your devices. For answers, visit us at allofiber.com slash switch today. Allo, settle for more. Hey, I've been hanging out here a long time outside of Panhandle Auto Group, and boy, do they have a great selection of vehicles. And their sales team is great to work with, and you can also get your vehicle serviced in detail, too. Welcome to Panhandle Auto. This is Sam Serta, General Sales Manager. It has been our pleasure to serve you for the past two years. At Panhandle Auto, we have a seat for everybody. Whether you need a vehicle for yourself, a son or daughter, our team will go above and beyond to satisfy your needs and even your dreams. So again, thank you from Sam Serta, General Sales Manager at Panhandle Auto, for allowing us to earn your business. At Panhandle Auto, it's time for something different. In boots, new and old, you've walked the rows of life, a fence length of time. You fought the floods, snow, and sweltering heat, and lifted breathing and settled pain. With a smile and a cry, you've strengthened your community and future generations, sometimes with nothing to say, often can't say enough. Like, let me do it again. Welcome back. For this week's featured pet of the week, we shine the spotlight once again on Chief, a Mastiff pit bull mix that needs a special adopter to give him the training he needs. Well, that's Chief. Um He's three, year old, three years old. He is a pit bull massive mix. He's a ball full of energy. And uh, ah, he's strong. <laughs> his adoption fee is 150. Um, that includes all his, his rabies vaccine, his rabies vaccine, his boosters, and his neuter, and the microchip. A good household for him would be one that doesn't have a lot of kids. Older kids are fine. Um, very disciplined. Two. Sizes for him is definitely an issue just because he's a really big dog. Um, but he, is he lovable? He is very lovable. He can't be in a home with cats or livestock. Um, dogs that know, he's okay with dogs as long as they know like to tell him to stop. So. Because he can, he can get really into it. Plus, whoever adopts Chief will also receive a $25 Murdoch's gift card to start spoiling him right away. To see if Chief would be a good addition to your home, you can go meet him at the Panhandle Humane Society daily during normal business hours. In boots, new and old, you've walked the rows of life a fence length of time. You fought the floods, snow, and sweltering heat and lifted breathing and settled pain. With a smile and a cry, you've strengthened your community 
and future generations. Sometimes with nothing to say. Often can't say enough. Like, let me do it again. Welcome to Kelly's, home of the Valley's best selection of wine, spirits, and beer. Whether you're brand loyal to the tried and true brew or really enjoy trying something different and new, Kelly's has something for everyone. Family owned and operated and right on your way on West 27th Street in Scotts Bluff. Kelly's Liquor, if you can't find it at Kelly's, it's not worth drinking. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a peek at what's happening on your midweek community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Panhandle Trails Intercity Public Transit, based in Alliance, Nebraska, is the only intercity bus serving Nebraska Panhandle communities and Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Panhandle Trails operates a regularly scheduled bus service, assisting you in making connections with Greyhound Bus Partners, regional airports, healthcare, employment and education opportunities, shopping, family, friends, and more. Panhandle Trails serves the general public of all ages and offers accessible transportation for those with special mobility needs. Let Panhandle Trails help you make your connection. Call 308-761-8747. At Platte Valley Bank, we want you to plan for tomorrow while you enjoy today. With our personalized trust and estate planning services, our trust services can help you do just that. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in the financial institution you choose to handle your trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local and serving our friends and neighbors. We offer a highly personalized, full line of personal trust and estate planning. Give us a call today and see how our trust services can help you. And finally tonight, Nebraska Public Transit Week is a celebration and promotion of public transit across Nebraska, organized by the Nebraska Department of Transportation and the Nebraska Association of Transportation Providers. Tri-City Roadrunner Mark Richter told KNB News that they will be marking this week in a number of ways, including signage you may see around town recognizing Public Transit Week. We are going to offer some different uh, giveaways on our buses we've had uh, through the Nebraska Association of Transportation Providers. Uh, they've provided us with some, some little giveaways, pens, bags, things of that nature. We've also had a number of local businesses uh, graciously donate some things to give away as uh, drawings. Uh, passengers will be able to register on the bus and we'll do drawings at the end of the week and give away some things to some of the passengers just to, as a thank you for, for using our services. Despite the pandemic decreasing America's need to travel in 2020, public transit provides its essential nature with Nebraska with over 2.7 million passenger boardings. Transit providers traveled over 5.7 million miles to get Nebraskans where they needed to go. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.